How's it going everybody? This is Cameron White with White Light Astrology giving you guys your January 2019 horoscope for Sagittarius. Happy New Year guys, or Happy New Year's guys. We are finally here. We're in 2019. We survived 2018. And I'm assuming it's a new year, it's a new you, you want new things, you want bigger things, Jupiter's in your first house, you're looking at bigger things for yourself, bigger ideas, bigger picture stuff. Um, I think January is going to come out the gate with a lot of that energy, with Jupiter just being in your first house. Venus is eventually going to get to Sagittarius and make a conjunction with Jupiter, there's going to be a lot of lively activity there. Mars is also going to be in Aries for basically uh, all of um, January. And with that trining your you know, ascendant or your sun, being in that fire sign, I really do think Mars is also going to be very supportive uh, of your endeavors and your goals this month, Sagittarius. However, um, I do think that this month is going to kind of teach us a lot of big lessons. And I say us because I'm Sag rising. Um, and I do really think that this uh, month is also going to give us a lot more of the... Um, energy that we kind of need that we kind of like need to like you know actually do things um i feel like that a lot of that energy is going to come to us this month and it's going to kind of push us in the right direction that we really need to be getting into uh with that being said though i guess let's go into january um starting right off with starting january 1st right off with the bang mars enters aries this is really, really good because Mars is in, uh, that's his ruling sign is Aries. You know, Mars is all about war and anger and stuff like that. And Aries, the god of war, stuff like that. Long story short, Mars really likes to be in Aries because Mars is hot and dry and so is Aries. Mars likes to move. Mars, Mars likes to conquer. Mars likes to, um, if he needs to, he likes to kill. Like Mars is very much uh, focused on the end task. And, you know, Mars wants to cut, he wants to sever, but when you have him in Aries and he's very strong and he's very powerful, it's kind of like you've got, you know, your car's topped off with gas, you just put all the maintenance onto it and it's running really, really well. Mars being in Aries is also going to be in your fifth house of love, of relationships, of romance. It's not necessarily remote relationships like the seventh house, but it's more of the subjective ex experience. The fifth house has to do with love, sex, you know, uh, the things that you enjoy, your hobbies, what you want to create, art, music, all the good fun stuff. And as Mars goes into Aries, you're maybe wanting to put a little bit more energy and emphasis into that. Or maybe if you were born in the day, you might have uh, a lot more experience with issues coming up with, you know, what you really want to create, what you want to pursue, where your energy is kind of focused on. Because you're going to want to explore certain sides of you. You're going to want to, you know, put more energy and attention to your children if you have kids. Or maybe you're wanting to explore and find and understand and experience more love in your life. Or the fifth house being, you know, creative hobbies and stuff like that. You may be wanting to put a lot of your energy into those creative things. So this is going to be a really good month for creative energy. Mars is going to be trining your ascendant. And it's going to be trining Jupiter later on. So like I said, we're starting off uh, January 1st with a bang. Mars will be in Aries. Good to go. Then also on the first, we have the Sun conjunct Saturn, which is a very sobering time when we have the Sun hitting Saturn. It's kind of resetting that new Saturn cycle as we go through the rest of the year. And as the sun hits Saturn, it's very much a time of what do we need to concentrate? What do we need to lock in? What do we need to put a foundation and walls or structure around? And this is in your second house of money and value and property and the things that you tangibly own, like things that you actually have and possess within you, something physical. And with the sun hitting Saturn, I do believe with this being in your second house, this is going to be a big time to go, okay, my, you know, my resources, my things that I have, they're starting to become concentrated. I need to, you know, keep what I have. No, don't get super, I guess the word is um, excessive with what you have. You may be losing a couple things, you know, money may be a little bit tight, but it's a big time to go, you know, what do I have with me already? What can I really secure and stabilize and concentrate and put that Mars and Aries energy into effort in your fifth house with being more creative and finding different outlets to really put that creativity and to put that energy in there. So the first is kind of like all of a sudden we have all this energy, but all of a sudden things get really, really serious. Moving on though, a couple days later on January 5th, we have the new moon and solar eclipse in Capricorn. This is a really big deal because when we go into January 1st, we're already going to be in eclipse season. So this is going to be the new moon in Capricorn. Um, this isn't going to be the last eclipse. Um, however, with the new moon happening in Capricorn, the solar eclipse, this is going to be a big time to reset, you know, these second house things. Capricorn rules your second house of money and possessions and resources. And so with this new moon happening, with this being an eclipse, I think this is going to really be a big emphasis on what are you doing with your money? What are you doing with the things that you have? What are you trying to concentrate things? What are you trying to build? What are you trying to, you know, accumulate? 
you know, Saturn's probably wanting to help you, you know, get your finance together, but it's probably also making it a lot more difficult. And this new moon being an eclipse, being a solar eclipse, this is going to be a really big time of like, okay, learning your limitations with your spending, learning your limitations with what you have, and understanding what it takes to really discipline yourself, to structure yourself, to get the physical items, the money, and the things that you need to possess in order to keep moving forward, in order to, you know, kind of take that next step forward. So this is going to be a pretty big deal, and an eclipse is basically just a big exclamation point on this. It's a very huge thing, and this will manifest later on this summer, as we go into like June and July of 2019. So keep your ears open, keep your eyes open. This is going to be a really big deal as we have this new moon solar eclipse. So with that being said, this is also going to be a big time to really rework your finances, set new intentions, realize a lot of things of where you can concentrate, where you can secure big Saturn words, you know, where you can really concentrate things. So then also on the fifth, we have Mercury moving into Capricorn, where Mercury's been in your first house, where he went retrograde, and now he went direct, and then he th flew through Sagittarius. Mercury was in detriment in Sagittarius, however. Mercury does have a little bit of, you know, he, he likes to be in Capricorn. Mercury can communicate. Mercury can speak on an efficient level. And as Mercury goes into your second house, this is going to be a time of like, okay, let me understand. Let me um, figure out. Let me really analyze what my finances look like, what I have to possess with my own. You know, what it's kind of like, you know, if you're trying to trade something or if you're, you know, this could be a money issue. This could be, you know, stuff going on with just the things that you possess and that you have inside of you. Now, um, or not even just inside of you, but like just things that you physically own. With Mercury going through Capricorn, I think this is going to be a big time to really analyze and detail and kind of correct these things. It's going to be like your mind's going to be fixated on it. So it's going to be a really easy time to focus on like, okay, you know, what do I have? What does my money look like? Where am I really trying to accomplish and obtain here? And Mercury is going to kind of give you the ideas and the thought, the clarity of thought and the organization skills that you need in order to kind of focus on that stuff. However, once we go into January 7th, two days later, we have Venus going into Sagittarius into your first house and everyone loves you for the rest of your life. I'm just kidding. Um, big, long story short, Venus is going into Sagittarius where um, personally, I love Venus and being in Sagittarius, but regardless, she's going to be in your first house. And with Venus being in your first house where you're going to be wearing more of that self-value, you're going to be looking at where can I value myself? What does that look like? What direction can I go in? Venus is all about value and beauty and bringing things together. She loves to create. She loves to indulge. And as Venus is in Sagittarius where it's kind of like she's explorative, she's adventurous, she's excited about moving forward, and this is in your first house where Jupiter is too, I think a lot more of the self-love stuff, a lot more like you may even be looking better, you may even dress better, you may even get a new outfit or something like that. But with Venus being in your first house, I think this is going to be a really big time to understand that value that you have for yourself. And you'll, you're, for one, you're going to see that represented to your outside world. Other people are going to be more naturally attracted to you. They're going to come up to you more and share that value with you and see that more in you. And as Venus goes into your first house, I think this is just going to be a really big time to bring that to your awareness and see where you can take it. See where you can go with it. See where it leads you to is a good way to put it. However, Uranus also goes direct on the same day. So as Uranus retrograded back into Aries at 28 degrees, he stations direct and he's going to start going forward again. And as Uranus is in Aries, this is again, you know, like charged up electricity. You know, we want to do things. We want to conquer things. We want to steal the fire from the gods and release the people. Or this is an Aries, so I want to free myself by stealing the fire from the gods. Um, while Mars is there too, I think it's just going to really bounce up that energy. But Uranus going direct is just kind of like, all right, like it's not an internalized thing anymore. It's time to start going. It's time to really release that Uranus energy out. Then after that on the 10th, there's not, so then basically after that on the 10th and 11th are like the last two things and then we kind of go into the next part of the month. However, on the 10th, we have the sun conjunct Pluto. This is in your second house. Um, this isn't really, you know, the biggest deal in the world. The sun hitting Saturn is a way bigger deal, but I think the sun hitting Pluto is going to be very significant of second house things, you know, what really isn't working, what's kind of falling apart, what needs to be drastically looked at, or, you know, what's going to be kind of drastically looked at towards you, what do you need to change, what do you need to kind of like sink your teeth into in a sense. Um, after that, on the 11th, the next day, we have Mercury conjuncting Saturn. So as Mercury goes through Capricorn, you know, his mind's on his money, his money's on his mind, um, and he is, uh, Mercury in Capricorn is kind of like the perfect go-to assistant in a corporate building and in an office space. Mercury in Capricorn wants to help, he wants to get things done, he wants to acquire things, make sure they all work, um, make sure the systems are operating fine, everyone's happy and good to go. 
And as Mercury hits Saturn, I think this is going to be Mercury basically communi communicating that Saturn message of Capricorn of like, okay, things are tight, things are real, you may not have as much as you need right now, things are being constricted, but where can you discipline yourself on only needing so little, only needing so much to really get by or get through what you need to get through? So I think Mercury hitting Saturn is going to feel like a big weight on your shoulders, but this is also a good time to just realize, you know, how can you efficiently and effectively use what you already have, even if you don't have a lot? So that is going to be a really big deal. Um, and then also on the 11th, we have Jupiter squaring Neptune. And this is going to be kind of weird because Jupiter is, he's in your first house. Like, you know, you're super positive about yourself. You want to move forward. You want to express that more. And Neptune being in your fourth where, where you're centering yourself, your home life, your family life, you know, where you're kind of living, your family, it just, it's all kind of a blur. And Jupiter is wanting to bring positive things to you. It's in your first house. It's all about you. However, as it squares Neptune, I think this is going to be a big time of seeing all of the opportunities and seeing the really, really big picture of everything, but also not getting like lost in the sauce. Like don't get over, like don't get confused just because, it, you know, not everything that glitters is gold. And while Jupiter is squaring Neptune, where I think who you are, what you're doing, what you believe in yourself and where you kind of center yourself, you're never going to be more confused than now because that's a very confusing transit. But I also think you're going to see a lot of the possibilities and a lot of the great things that can happen. Just make sure you're not bypassing things. Just don't make sure or make sure you're not, you know, just letting things go over, you know, without a glance. Um, Jupiter squaring Neptune, it's kind of like, you know, things can look really good. All of a sudden you get into it and it's not what it appeared to be. It could be, you know, one way is the truth. This way is the truth. The, you know, it's not this way. I think the biggest thing though, is Jupiter does square Neptune is to really look at yourself and go, okay, understand that you're in the midst of change and, or the, yeah, the midst of change. Understand that you want to grow more, that you want to expand yourself more and you want to, you know, take heat on that. Just don't make sure that you're really knowing what you're getting yourself into and just play around with it. It's Jupiter and uh, Sag and Neptune and Pisces. It's very funky, mutable energy. You can change this. You can shift this. You can move this. So with that being said, Jupiter and Neptune is going to make you feel a little bit foggy. It's going to make you feel a little bit unclear, but just really sit with all the possibilities that are there for you, especially in terms of who you are, just more of your personality and where you live, who, like, you know, how you relate to your family, how you show up in your family and things like that. Um, the other thing is basically after, and basically that's it for like the first part of the month. Then we go to the second part of the month and this is when things get really, really intense. So on January 16th, we have the sun hit the South node, which is also really important because as the sun hits the South node where the South node is what we need to release from, what we need to walk away from. It's what we've got with us. It's kind of like, um, if you watch me and uh, Joe Gleason talked about this in the North Node, South Node, and Cancer and Capricorn video I did. If you guys check that out, that'd be cool. But we talked about this on um, that video about the South Node being our past and what we've brought with us, what we're naturally already good at. And I think the sun being on the South Node is illuminating this being like, Okay, like in order to move forward, you need to realize what you already can do, what you already have, what you already like, you know, you may overthink it or not overthink, you may, you know, glance over, you may not think it's a big deal, uh, you know, a big deal. But as the sun hits the south node, what do you already have? What can you already use that you have available to you right now in order to push that stuff forward? And the south node is kind of like, you know, we don't need to be going in that direction. And that's not the point of this. The point is, is that in order to move forward, you got to use things that you've learned in your past. And that's that south node in your second house stuff. So there's that. Two days later, we have on January 18th, Mercury's going to hit Pluto. Not the biggest deal, but I do think Mercury hitting Pluto is going to be kind of like, it's going to make you feel a little bit deeper. It's going to make you feel a little bit more intense. It's going to be a little bit more raw and real. And that's okay, but just it's in Capricorn. Like, keep it professional. Don't let it overwhelm you. Be serious about it. It's okay. <laughs> um, but then also on the 18th, we have Venus trining Mars. Exactly. So Mars is in Aries, you know, you're wanting to do stuff, you're moving forward with projects and creative efforts, maybe you're spending more time with your partner, maybe you're spending more time with your kids, whatever it is, or maybe your kids are taking up too much money. But um, 
as Venus trines Mars, where Venus is in your first house and you've got a lot of that, you know, that Venus in your first house, you're looking good, you're feeling great, you know, like you're feeling alive and excited. And as Mars trines Venus, this is going to be a really good time to be like, you know, this is how I feel right now. How can I take that energy and that value that I have for myself and actually create something with it? You know, find more joy in your partner, find more joy in your kids, find more joy in your art and your creative pursuits. Go and do something fun. Go party. Like, you know, just go and have a good time and experience what you have available to you're going to feel very on fire so make sure you really utilize it the best way that you can so then after that january 20th is a pretty big day uh then we have let's see um oh yeah that's right i was like there's like four things going on so first we have the sun going into aquarius aquarius season starts the sun's out of your second house it's in your third house now whatever so then we also have the full moon in leo and this is a total lunar eclipse now this is interesting because the nodes are already out of Leo and Aquarius and they're in Cancer and Capricorn, but we still have one more total so, uh, total lunar eclipse in Aquarius and Leo, it's at zero degrees. Um, this is gonna be pretty like, like one last heroic aha. As the moon's in, or as the sun's in Aquarius where it's like, what are we connecting to? What are we trying to build? What are we trying to collaborate on? What is the, you know, this is your third house too, by the way, this is ideas and um, creative thinking, speech, you know, very mercurial type stuff, but, um, or mercurial type stuff, but it's also very much related to your siblings and your immediate environment. But as the sun goes into here, and this is where the general area or emphasis of energy is kind of on, and this full moon in Leo happens in your ninth house, we're talking about big revelations of understanding yourself and understanding your power, understanding your, you know, what you believe about yourself and what you want to believe, what you have love to give, what you want to learn, what you want to experience in this full moon, even though it's an eclipse and it's a, a lunar eclipse. I think this is going to be a really big time where you've taken a lot of what you've learned over the past year and a half of the uh, nodes being in Leo and Aquarius. And it's kind of like, all right, this is your last chance to feel that pride, to feel that power, to feel that worthiness and to feel that love. Act on it, believe in it, experience it. So that's gonna be a really big deal. So again, sun goes into Aquarius, we have the total lunar eclipse, and we have Mars squaring Saturn. And this is what's gonna be difficult, is while Mars is in your fifth house, it's gonna square Saturn in your second, where it's like, well, you wanna have fun, you wanna do all, do all these creative adventures, you wanna, you, you have all this energy for it, but you're lacking the resources, you're lacking the money, you're lacking the funds, you're lacking the time. There's a conflict of interest between Saturn and Mars, but Saturn's in his domicile. Uh, Mars is in his domicile. This is, this is gonna be a lot of tension here. And it really comes down to, okay, if you want to go after these creative pursuits and you wanna spend this time and this energy and the things that you love and that you enjoy, make sure you have the money for it. Make sure you have the resources for it. Make sure you've got your, you cross your T's and you dot your I's to make sure you have everything you need to do that. So that's gonna be a big deal. Also, Venus squares Neptune on that day. So as Venus squares Neptune, you know, it's like all this Venus stuff is in your first house, you're feeling excited, you're feeling alive. And as it squares Neptune, where it's in your fourth house, this is gonna be a big time to really look at the opportunities that that really brings. It's kind of like, I do feel really good. I do feel excited. I am having a lot more of the self-love, but what does that mean? Where can I center myself more on that? What do I have to, you know, it's kind of like, you may be so excited to like, you know, this is something I, I DJ weddings for a living. And a lot of the times the officiants tell the bride and groom to go, hey, just take a couple deep breaths and look around and enjoy it. That's kind of like Venus square Neptune, like sit, look back and enjoy it before it's gone, before it moves ahead, before it's all just lost in the in your memories. So that's also going to be a really big thing. I think the 20th is just going to be a crazy fucking day. However, after that, on the 21st, we have Venus conjuncting Jupiter in your first house. This is like that boom, like boom, like that's the only way to put it. Um, Venus is in your first house, that self-love, that love, that value that you're expressing and that you're exploring and that you're putting out there. It's Jupiter where Jupiter's like, fuck yeah, we want you to look good. Treat yourself. Like good things are definitely happening with, happening with that Venus-Jupiter conjunction in your first house. Um, and also on the 21st, Mercury is going to conjunct the south node. And so as Mercury conjuncts the south node, this is uh, kind of moving forward from the sun hitting the south node. As Mercury hits the south node, it's kind of like really understanding how to utilize what you already know. Understanding how to utilize what you've learned and what you are capable of already doing. And it's just basically understanding that and 
utilizing that in that mercurial sense uh, in the best way possible and something that's going to be efficient, something that's going to be effective and to kind of, you know, uh, put yourself in a little box there. And I know that sounds very limiting, but Mercury on the south node in Capricorn needs to be put in a box. <laughs> he needs to, like, find a way to use what he has and focus and make it work. Then after that, on the 23rd, we have Mercury going into Aquarius. This is when Mercury is going to be in uh, your third house. So you're going to have a lot more creative ideas. You're going to be thinking outside of that box because you've been stuck in it for a minute. Once you start getting outside of that box, you'll get creative with it. You'll see different connections. You'll see different ways that things can work together and different ways to bring things together and to solidify them. So that is going to be good. Then moving forward, we only have two things left for the rest of the month. And on January 25th, we have Mars trining Jupiter, which is like... Jupiter's in your first house, you've been positive, that energy's on you, and as Mars is in your fifth house of love, your romance, you know, kids, and sex, and, you know, fun things, and Mars is going to be hitting that, shining Jupiter, it's going to be really easy to be having a really, really good time. So have a good time. That's my advice. I'm a Sag Rising. Go party. Go have a good time. Go explore. You may have a little bit more energy or just more positive energy to pour into that, so just go and do it. Go and have fun on the 25th. And then on the 29th, the last thing that we got going on in January is the Mercury, Sun, Kazemi, and Aquarius. This is when Mercury goes through the, you know, the, the heart of the sun and the sun's kind of pouring in all this energy through Mercury. And at the same time, Mercury is on the other side of the sun. It's not in between the sun and the earth. And I think this is just, you know, as Mercury goes on the other side of the sun, it's an Aquarius where Aquarius is kind of like connecting all these dots together, seeing the, like, you know, a bird's eye view of things. I think this is Mercury getting to that top of that point where it really sees the big picture and it sees how to bring, it's not just seeing the big picture like in Sagittarius, it's seeing the big picture and how it can all work together, how it can all be meshed together and how it can all basically with networks and connections be tied in and have a lot of efficiency and have a lot of effectivity and have a lot of meaningful results. So I think that's also a big deal. I shouldn't say I think that is a big deal. but. I really think January is going to be lit for you guys. Like I, out of all the, out of all the signs, mostly the fire signs are going to get a lot of good stuff. But you guys got Venus and Jupiter in your first house this month. Have a good time. Express yourself. You're going to feel really tight, but you know things are going to feel really tight. But this is going to be the time to be more focused on the positive. Be more focused on what you've got going on, what you can do, because those those tight themes of money, resources, things like that aren't going to be as bad if you can enjoy yourself, you can really get yourself out there and see what opportunities can be presented to you. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing, and I'll be seeing you guys for next month's horoscope.